Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics with a fun DIY and useful DIY project. If you have a tablet or e-reader, sometimes you want a little bit more protection than just slipping it in your tote bag or your purse. Well, we've got a project today to show you how you can make your own sleeve that'll fit your custom mobile device. Now, just look how fantastic it fits so easily, and it's made with just two back quarters and some batting. Super simple, a little bit of a stretchable elastic and a button, and you're on your way. And this makes a great gift idea. If you have a friend or family member that's always on their e-reader or tablet, this just makes a fantastic gift. Now, the fabrics that we use today are bandana. That's by from me and my sister's designs by Motive Fabrics. Love this collection. There was five colorways in the collection. Of course, this would be great in any um, uh, fabrics. And of course, you can tailor that to your style or whoever you may be making this for as a gift. So let's get started. Of course, two fat quarters are needed. And as always, on our website, on the bottom of the home page, there's a free download link. You can always click that and we'll um, have our measurements there so you don't have to feel like you have to write those down during the tutorial. Those are available for you as an immediate resource on our website 24-7. And of course, if you're wanting to find some this collection or maybe other fat quarters, on our homepage, when you click on fabrics, go down to pre-cuts and you'll see fat quarters there. We have a beautiful array of fabrics from which to choose and we're always adding new fabrics. So there's going to be something for everyone's taste. So that's why you can find fabrics and the pattern and be sure to use the labels. I found that the labels on this, this particular layout was really helpful to me because some of the measurements were kind of close. So when you have your fat quarter laid out, as we're showing here, you're going to see those labels. That's also part of the free download. I encourage you to go ahead and cut those out and you can just use some tape or pins to secure those to your actual fabrics so that you're making sure you're grabbing the right fabric when you need to to create your own tablet cover. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do as we're going to grab this piece back here, which is the, the front, I'll call that the front. Now because each person's tablet is maybe just a little bit of a different size, normally with our patterns, there's very specific measurements. What we wrote here with this sticker is front, device H meaning device height plus two inches. That way you can take your own device here and we will measure that so let's see here what we've got. This looks like this is about mm, six and three quarters. And so we would add two inches to that. So that would be eight and three quarters. And I encourage you to go ahead and write right on your stickers because this is going to be a, a measurement that you're going to keep referring to. And then you'll just turn that and you'll measure the same. So it looks like that's about nine and a half. So we'll add two inches, that'll be 11 and a half inches. So that's how I like to use those stickers. So let's put that aside for now. Of course, we made our little sleeve to fit that specific um, mobile device. So you'll grab the piece marked front, you've measured your device and you've added your two inches. Now we're gonna grab some batting. We just use the warm and natural batting. I don't think you want anything that's too poofy or it might get too, um, take up too much space, that and the fabric, that your your e-reader uh, maybe is too snug. Now, if you want the extra padding, you might want to add maybe two and a quarter inches and two and a quarter inches so it, there's enough room to compensate for the extra loft if you do use a, a, a more lofty batting than I'm using today. So let's grab one of the pieces of the batting and even before we, we uh, put that on the back, we need to mark this. So let me take the sticker off just for now. We, if you, if you can see in here, our stitch lines are centered uh, on the other side of our button and we liked that. So for that reason, the first thing that we did is we found center of our front piece and I just put a little crease in there. So your button, if you can visualize this, the button will be kind of right up, if you can see this, your button will be right up in here. So you want your lines on either side, your drawn lines on either side of that crease. Now the, the distance between one row of quilting to the next is one and a half inches. So we will take our ruler and measure three quarters of an inch to the right 
and draw a line and three quarters of an inch to the left and draw a line. You know I'm gonna use the friction pen because I use it all the time. And especially when you're going to be quilting, you don't, you don't want that black line to be there. So once we get done with the quilting, all we have to do is iron uh, those lines away and they'll be gone forever. So let's turn that over and we'll measure three quarters of an inch to the other side of that line. And that's the beginning point for marking our entire front piece here. And now you can just come over your one and a half inches and you'll mark all the way over. Okay, and you'll do the same thing from the bottom. So one and a half inches. Okay, now you could come over again another uh, one and a half inches, but what we found is this area is actually gonna get trimmed away, so you don't need to do this um, left to right. Now when you turn this, and again, you can find your center um, if you want and start marking from that and you keep marking out. Um, you do need to go ahead and um, there, there's more slip left to right we found when we were actually um, doing the quilting ahead of time. So find your center. Let's just do that together. Now we don't want to iron or we're going to lose our lines. Okay, that's, that's the one thing. <laughs> I've done that before where I've marked a bunch of lines and then I went to iron to find center and all my lines were gone. So I had a blonde moment there. Don't do that. You can even just do a little mark right there. That's our center. And you could start marking from that point. Again, three quarters, three quarters, and mark your two. So the reason, the reason that we went ahead and made this background piece actually bigger, notice how it's bigger than the tablet, is when we start doing the quilting on our machines, we found a little bit of slipping, a little bit of maneuvering, this kind of, you know, it's not really secured to the back in any way. So that allows this room to trim down. I'll show you what I mean in just a little bit here. So let's take this sticker off. You'll just position this on top of your bedding. Of course, you're gonna have your lines drawn. Let's, let's even just draw a line so you see what we're doing here. I want you to be able to visualize everything I'm doing. So you can do this from home and over an inch and a half. Of course, we have our drawn lines like this. Okay, and we would continue down here. Pin that, do yourself a favor and pin it. The other thing I found out is if we use a walking foot, that kind of also helps um, it kind of just stay good and sandwiched together. So take some pins, pin it all the way around, and you're just gonna sew those lines. Now I've done that ahead of time to save us some time. And I, I, what I did is I, I kept the drawn lines in there. I don't know if you can see the black lines that I drew. I drew. Um, we're gonna take that to the iron and I'm gonna show you how they just melt away. That's my favorite part of every tutorial I do is showing you how the friction pen um, just literally dis disappears. So let's get this out of the way and I'm going to show you that part. And again, notice how I didn't do any lines out here. That's because we are going to go ahead and cut this thing down and there was kind of no point in sewing that line and sewing that line if they're just going to be cut away. So let me show you. Now we'll take it to the hot iron and those lines are just gone. Just gone forever. Isn't that cool? Okay, now I mentioned that we made this bigger than we needed to so that we could go ahead and trim it down. What do we trim it down to? Let's get our lining pieces out here. That's what we will be trimming to. Now, of course, look in the bag here. See, this is just batting back here. So you have one lining piece, two lining pieces. I have one lining piece, two. So I have my two. I need just one on top here. I'll, make, I'll even flip it over like this so it's a little bit easier for you to see the contrast. We're just going to trim this quilted piece to be the same size as this. Now, if you're very careful, you can lay your ruler on there and you will be able to trim this to be the same size. Now don't trim your lining piece to be smaller. Make sure the very edge of that lining piece is diving just under the edge of your ruler, like this. And I will trim that up. And then without shifting anything, move that out of the way. 
We're just gonna turn it. And let's again, make sure that edge is underneath. Now look at my rotary cutter. Are we coordinated or what? See how it matches all this cute part? This is a neat, this is a limited edition rotary cutter from Ulfa. It's, I think it's called Emperor Purple. Um, we have those available and they're, just, it's so much fun to have fun little accessories like this in the sewing room. Of course, I have the standard yellow one, but you know, I, I appreciate color, so I had to get the purple. So let's get this side trimmed up, and then one more. Okay, making sure I don't cut that lining. All right, so those are ready to go. So we put our two lining pieces aside for now. We have our quilted, so what we have so far, let me bring you up to speed, let's put that aside. We have our quilted front, and we have our two lining pieces. So let's start with now the back. Since we're talked about quilting, the, the, the back of your e-reader is done the same exact way. So let's just talk about that real quick so that we can get all the quilting done. Same story. What those measurements were that we wrote on our other sticker, it's the same measurement. It's your device height plus two inches, your device width plus two inches, but don't forget, if you're using a really lofty batting, you might wanna add two and a quarter rather than two so that your e-reader can slip in or your tablet, whatever you're using, can slip in easily and you don't damage it, bringing it in and out of the sleeve. So you'll draw your, don't forget, find center, three quarters of an inch on either side, draw your lines, same way this way bring in your batting, quilt it. You'll again use the lining, same thing. You're gonna bring in your lining once this is all quilted now, okay? And you're gonna trim that all up. Now we did that ahead of time and that's what this is right here. Notice they're the same size. That's, so that's how we've gotten to this place. So let's take that out of the way as well. Okay, so we have our back which is now quilted. We have our front, which is now quilted, and we have our lining. The next step in our process will actually be this little pocket. So let's go to that step now. So with our pocket, first thing we need to do is make sure that we have it properly oriented. Let's make sure. Yep, you see how that one's? This is where, I, this is where um, you always wanna check your orientation because it would be very easy for me to have assumed this was the top and turn that edge under when it would have been wrong, right? It needs to be this orientation. So make sure your stickers are also oriented where that's the top, that's the bottom, that's the left, and that's the right. So we're gonna take this to our ironing board and we're gonna tuck this down a quarter, tuck this down a quarter again. I'll just get you started and show you what that looks like if you're new to sewing or crafting. Sew it down a quarter. I'm sorry, fold it down a quarter and follow it up with your iron. Here, let me bring this over so you can see this better. Fold it and follow right up with your iron. And you have already know that the reason we're folding it over twice is so we don't have any raw edges because raw edges will fray, especially as you're pulling the tablet or things actually, you know, whatever you might have in here, papers, pens, um, we were just gonna keep that edge so it's not gonna unravel in time. So that's been folded over twice and you would just take this to the sewing machine and sew an eighth of an inch here to secure that edge. So we did one ahead of time that was folded and sewn. So now we're ready to go to the next step of us sewing this. Let's, let's clean up just a little bit here. We don't need those things in our point of view right now. So here, we're gonna go ahead and lay this on top. You will pin so it doesn't shift and you're just gonna run a eighth of an inch stitch here all the way around. Of course, leave this side open and when I come back, we'll go to the next step. Now that I have the pocket basted onto the front, we will take the back, which was quilted, right side up and we'll turn the front right side down so the right sides are together and the wrong sides are out and we'll take that to the sewing machine and we're going to sew down this side across the bottom and back up to the top leave the top open 
and that'll be a quarter inch seam. Now, we're gonna do two things at once here. Once that's done, then we're gonna go ahead with our lining and similarly, with right sides together, we'll go ahead and sew the quarter of an inch all the way around. With the lining, you're gonna actually kinda of clip those corners right there and you're gonna turn that right side out and press it. With this one, Yes, we will clip those corners, but don't turn that right side out at this point. And then I'll show you how to go to the next step. So now you've got, I want to just check where you are and make sure we're at the same place. We've got our, our quilted pieces sewn together and I clip those corners. And the lining, we had that right sides together. We sewed that, and I wanted to mention that you wanna always make sure you press those seam open the seams open and clip the corners, and we turn that right side out. So now, I want you to look inside your bag. Now this is very important, because when I tried to do the sample yesterday, I actually did this backwards, where I ended up with this little elastic thing on the front, which of course won't work. Now inside this little sandwich, I would say, you can see there's the, line, the, the, the quilted part, and there's the pocket. We don't want to have our elastic cording there. That needs to be over on this side, okay? So I'm actually gonna mark this with a little X here because it's gonna remind me, if I can mark on there, there we go. It's gonna remind me that my little bit of elastic cording needs to go on this side and not the side where the pocket is. So that you would just wanna check it and you wanna mark that ahead of time. Now this is the really cool part. It doesn't seem like this is gonna work, but trust me, it's gonna work. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put that lining inside the quilted bags. And you wanna get it up down in those corners so, such that you see how there's this seam and that seam and you wanna go ahead and line those up and pin. Now you'll do that all the way around. Now keep track, there's, there's our pocket. Now we've marked it with an X, so we're safe. We're, we're good to go. I'll tell you what we'll do. Because the cording is gonna be over on this side, this side over here, let's leave that back side open a good three, four inches, probably four inches for turning. So let's go ahead and pin in that corner I wanna show you how we're gonna do the cording here. Let's just come around to that side real quick. I like to pin everything, and then we'll just kinda of squeeze that cording in there. Okay. So, we, if you can see this, I don't know, let's see, what's that, what is that? About an inch and a half. Now, of course, it's down in here, so if you're gonna cut this probably, you can decide what length you like. If you like that, let's see what that's gonna be. About four inches, let's, let's go with four inches. So you're just gonna bring those ends together, right there. We've got our little bag marked. See how handy that is? Because I could have easily put that on the wrong thing. Now that's gonna be squeezed right down in here. Like that. Now before I take this to the sewing machine, while I have my cording in there, I wanna make sure, you see this lane here of the stitching. I wanna make sure that that cording is, is really centered on that. So you might wanna put in a couple extra pins so that doesn't shift on you when you're sewing. Let's see here, maybe not like quite like that. It's a little bit fussy, that cording is slippery. And I have a little bit of it sticking out because I wanna have a visual when I'm sewing this to make sure it, that I'm, I'm catching it. That's why I have a little bit of it sticking out and we'll trim that away. So, this will be your opening in the back. Definitely when you go over the cording, go forward and back a couple times because that's a stress point, of course, where it might wanna pull out. So we'll take that to the sewing machine. We'll sew a quarter of an inch all the way to this pin. I'm gonna stop and back up and I'll start again over here 
and continue. And this is the opening where we'll turn everything through. So once we turn everything out, I'll make sure I give it a good press and we'll take it to the next step. So I turned this right side out and don't worry, when I, <laughs> when I first made the sample, um, after this was made, then I made a sample. Just, I was like, I did this wrong. No, this is what this should look like. So this is your lining. This will go right back inside. Isn't that cool? It doesn't seem like it should work, but I told you it would and it did. So now you're just gonna fit that right inside. So the corners meet the corners and it lays as smooth as you can. And of course, a press is always great uh, to get it all smoothed out. And now, as you would suspect, you're gonna take this to your ironing board and fold it down a quarter of an inch like we've done. Like you, since you sewed a quarter of an inch, you'll need to fold this a quarter of an inch. And the same with this. You'll fold that your quarter of an inch down as well and give a good press. There we go. Now you'll go ahead and pin that so that's not gonna come open. Pin that real well. And then I'll show you on our finished one. You're just about done. Isn't that cool how fun this is? So you will take it, I'll show you on this one. Take it to your sewing machine and you're just gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around the top. So I'll have to open that back up and put that end back in a little bit better. I didn't put that in deep enough. So that happens. The good news is, is I haven't closed this. So all I have to do is open that back up, seam up a little bit, put a new piece in there, and we're ready to go. But that's happened. I'm, I'm not going to cut the video. I want you to see this. I screw up too. This stuff happens. So if this happens to you, unpin this, turn this right, right, right back out, go to that area, do a little bit of seam ripping, pull it out, cut a new in, uh, piece of four inch cording, put that in maybe a little bit deeper, sew it back, get back to this place, pin this back together, top stitch your eighth of an inch all the way around, and then all you'll need to do with some a coordinating um, thread and needle is just sew your button on and then your e-reader is completely done. So I hope you enjoyed this e-reader and tablet sleeve video from Shabby Fabrics.